Milan was, better, if Milan are going to be ready to play against the big teams and try to reclaim this Scudetto, these are kind of the, these are the performances and the statements that they need to make. Napoli are telling you Napoli did this all last year. They took care mm-hmm. of what they had to on the, the lower the lower teams, and yep. they're showing so far this season they can do the same thing again. So anybody's going to compete with Napoli this year. And you know, I, I I've had my comments about Rudy Garcia this year and, and my you know my uh, worries about him, but Napoli are still a, a good solid core of a team that they had same had team they had last year. They can handle these teams, and so if you want to compete with them, the Milan's, the Inter's, the Juve's, the Ro- whoever, you have to beat these teams that are that are that are below you in the table. And what we've seen so far this year, well, last year Inter and Milan could not do that. They struggled, and that's why they finished where they finished in the table, um, so far behind Napoli. So far, so good. It's it's what you want to do. What you want to see. They look comfortable in both those games. So that's a good start. Again, both those teams are traditionally struggle against these these teams that are you know provincial teams. Uh, for some reason, they find a way to just blow the game. What they haven't done is they look fairly solid overall. So you want to see more of that. And again, with any of these big teams, until they face each other, and the first test is this Friday for Milan and Roma. How do they do against each other? Against the Seven right. Sisters? That's the true test. We said that last year with, with Napoli to start the season. Yeah, they looked on fire against the provincial teams. We said, what did they look like against a, a top a seven sister? First game against Milan, a hell of a game where they won two to one at the San Siro, and Cavada had a really great game, and so did Osimhen. Or Osimhen didn't even play the first game, um, and that's when we were like, okay, look, maybe Napoli is for real. They can they can play. They can play at a dangerous venue. So we'll see how as these these weeks progress and how these matchups come on, how these teams fare. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the Romas and Lazio's. Atalantas of the world compete against these other seven sisters that are at the higher end of the of the seven sister list. Are you in agreement as some of the chat are all sitting here saying that it's it's Milan Napoli Inter three way, I mean three way fight for the title. Um, I, I after two games I'm not satisfied with reaching that conclusion yet. Um, I think that all three of them will certainly be in the hunt, yeah. um, and I know that that's low hanging fruit to reach for. Um, but if you had to pick a team that is not those three that will sort this out and jump back into this, who do you give the best chance to? Well, I, I will say this at the, in our preview pod. I did say those three, along with Juventus, would be in the mix, all very tight for the, for the title. And I, even though I've changed my opinion on the top four, I think teams that are outside those three, that the top three at the at the moment, I would say certainly Juventus could turn around with the not only the team, but the manager that they have. They know how to get wins. It's it's a fact. They may not look pretty at times. Most mm-hmm. of the time, they know how to get wins. Allegri knows how to get wins. I would also keep an eye on look for Lazio. I really do like Lazio's team from last year. Um, and they can figure out how to be without life without Sergei milikovic Savic. You can get some other pieces in there and get it to work. I think they can they can right their ship. And Roma as well. You cannot discount Roma. Um, they have more mental problems than they than do anything else. Got to get the goals in. Uh, I like seeing Pelotti kind of resurgence of him this season, you know, over the last many years that he's been quiet, especially last year. So, yeah, I would say those are the three teams I would look out for. And I probably, I would say, don't discount Atalanta. Yes, we know they don't have Europe this year, uh, but they've looked mighty good offensively. And some of these pieces they got, I mean, Coop Miners is starting to come to his own now. He's been given the keys to this team to be like the, the to lead everything, the quarterback, if you will. He's looked good. He's pushed up on plays when he had to. He kept. He stays deep when he had to. Coop Miners is going to be a, a a player we're going to be talking about maybe MVP of the season. You know, come you know come the end of the season. So we'll see. But uh, those are probably two, three four teams I would say look out for. Hey, I, I said I said one team, Richard. You. I can't pick one. Man. Basically, basically ran down the rest of the league. Hella Verona, <laughs> right? Hella Verona. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to still say Roma. I mean. I be, and for the reasons that I just explained, I said, okay, they, they had two game environments that that's not the way they win, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, th- they win by, you know, being more organized, being more compact. I, you know, I've never seen defenders, I've never seen Roma so exposed under Mourinho. Um, and I think that that's something that's going to get corrected. You know, they got off to a very shocking start, but I think that that's something, you know, that they clean up and fix. I'm not there with Lazio. Um, I, I, you know, I, 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 I think that the Milinkovic-Savic impact, and it's only been two games, I think it's, it's felt. 
um, the dynamism that he played with in midfield for Lazio, I think, is sorely missing there. So, um, you know, so I'll tip Roma. I still want to keep an eye on um, Juventus. Um, my concern, uh, Alberto, is Alexandro is getting past it. I, he does. He sometimes doesn't know. Looks like he doesn't know who to mark. He doesn't know where to defend and where to be. And there were gaps between him and Bramer that. Bologna exploited and probably should have scored more than one. Um, and I think that good teams that have a good collection of, of playmaking midfielders and pace that can play behind a striker that they can play off of um, are going to be equipped to exploit that. Uh, so that's something that we kind of touched on. Uh, and that was some of the, th- that was some of what stood out for me when I was watching the Juventus Bologna game. 